So the next bit of the exercise, it says uh, you could add a similar engine to control pitch in the same way. Um, and what I'm proposing by that is that you simply duplicate the function object. And the reason you can do this, uh, well, it's function and line objects, I mean this combination here, this engine. Um, the reason why you can do this is because the cycle object permits a signal input. So it's not just a max MSP um, control message that it will receive, it will also receive a signal message from well, any signal object really. Uh, we'll look at more of more of the things that it will accept uh, later on. For now we're going to use line. So if I unlock this and move that over there, uh, select the whole lot and move it down so you can see it a bit better. And in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the size of this and just zoom in a little bit. So we've got, uh, and I'm going to get rid of this um, number box because it's now redundant. So we now have two envelopes, one of which is controlling the amplitude and the other of which we will use to control the uh, pitch envelope. And if we look down here again, it says, uh, well, it's, we've got signal, cy cycle will take a signal input, so that's fine. And then it says, in order to work with the frequency domain, you'll need to change the low and high display range of your function object in the inspector window. What does it mean by that? Well, uh, you'll, when I was talking about the uh, control of the amplitude, I said that the range was between, you know, not the patch, was between 0 and 1. Well, if we were to send values between 0 and 1 to control our frequency, we would just get... Um, an oscillation of between 0 and 1 hertz, which is not going to produce any audible sound at all. So what we will do is change the range so that it m is able to move between, say, 100 hertz and 1000 hertz. Um, and to do that, I need, as I say, to go into the inspector window. So I go into there, and if I scroll down, you will notice that I have um, <coughs> low and high display range down here. And I can change that value, which refers to the vertical domain of this uh, function object. Uh, just up here we've got, where are we, uh, the domain display value. The domain refers to the horizontal axis. So we'll change this one for the time being. So between 100 and 1000. And notice that our uh, shape has now disappeared. That's not to say that function has forgotten it. It still resides in it, but it's beyond the range that it is currently displaying. So if I lock the patch and I try and write in any more uh, points, you will notice that uh, the, the point now has a, a line which goes to somewhere beyond the bottom of the, fun the, the uh, object, um, which isn't very useful because we can't, we can't now control those, the nodules that are, in you know, that are out of view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear, clear that table altogether, so the function table altogether, by sending a clear message to it. And this is quite handy because obviously it means you can obliterate anything that's in the function object already. And I can draw in a new pattern and I can do something that's sort of a bit wiggly. Like that. OK. Um, and now if I uh, trigger this then it will uh, trigger that um, pitch shift, if you like, or that pitch wobble. Um, we won't hear it at the moment because if I were to do it now, um, our, uh, our amplitude is going to remain at zero because that's the last signal message that it's received from line. And you notice actually if I hover over that, sig that signal um, cable, then there's a zero, which basically means that, that that's... The, the line isn't convert, you know, carrying any signal data at the moment, aside from zeros. So what I need to do is to connect this button object to this one, which means that when I trigger the pitch envelope, I will also trigger the amplitude envelope, and we will get uh, some sound out. There you go. And that is as long as the envelope for the sound. So they're both, as it happens, at... at uh, one second long. Now, why do I know that it's one second long? Well, I've, I've pointed out the uh, vertical 
range of the function object, but notice if I hover over a nodule again, the x axis, which is displayed up here, um, is on zero. If I move to right at the end, you'll notice that it's on 1000. And that's referring, as line understands it, to milliseconds. And that's exactly the same up here as well. So that one is on zero. This one is on uh, 1000 in the x axis. So what would we need to do if we wanted to change those to a longer value, which we could do. So, so we make our overall envelope longer. I'm just going to check time. We're all right. Uh, well, to do that, um, I could go into the inspector window of each and I could change the domain display value here, which is currently displaying 1000. And we could make it um, ooh, it's slightly more than 1000 now. I managed to change it to 2000. Now, if I do that to the to this uh, function editor, of course, I need to do it to this one as well, um, so that they are both of the same length or can accommodate the same length. And you notice that the contents are squidged up because this is the extra second that we have added to the available space. So I could draw in some more wiggles or I could just uh, draw a longer decay for each of those, which I will do just for time's sake. Um, and uh, so now the envelope is, is 2000 milliseconds long. You notice that I had to go into each one of the function objects in order to change those independently. Um, it might be quicker to, well, it'd be nice if we could change them both at the same time. And we can do that. If I unlock the patch and go into the help file for each, uh, for, for the function object, that opens up. Um, and as usual, we see a, a, a rather uh, a cluttered window that um, or a very useful window that indicates to us all the, well, a variety of the messages that uh, function receives and the kind of um, tasks that it performs. And obviously there's an explanation for all of that. Um, these windows are always a little bit intimidating, uh, but if you, if, if you don't, if, if you just read them carefully, then actually they're extremely helpful. And what we have up in this section here is um, some messages which might help us. So you notice that one of them is labelled domain. Well, we know that the domain is the x-axis, i.e. The, in, in this case, the length of our envelope. And we could have that, you know, we can put in an argument to send at the same time, uh, which will di di you know, dictate how long that's going to be. So we'll take that idea and I will send a message of domain well, this time I'll send it 5,000. And if I connect that to both objects, then obviously it's going to allow us to change both at the same time, which is handy. Um, in this case, the um, uh, again, we, we have the squashing up of data in order to, to allow us to fit in some extra space at the end. Um, so that's the domain message, and we can do exactly the same thing with the range. So in this case, I'd put in a message of range and maybe go between uh, 200 and 500 hertz. And I can send that to this object over here. I don't want to send it to the amplitude object, obviously, because that's um, not how we want it to behave. But now, once again, we see that the, um, well, in this case, the shape is stretched because our 100 is somewhere down here and our 1000 is somewhere up here, our range is now only showing 200 to 500. So um, that's OK. It might be useful to us. I'm just going to um, add some extra messages to allow us to go back to the values we had originally. Whoops, range 100 to 1000 for this one. And domain, oops that domain 2000 for both of them. Okay, check time again. Ooh. Okay, so I click on this one, it goes back to original uh, size um, in terms of its length and this one to go back to the original range. Um, there's two extra things I want to show you in this respect which I will have to do in the next tutorial.